Hello everyone, I am going to talk about the gross features of male urethra. This section includes the course of the urethra, its parts and features, internal and external urethral sphincters, its blood supply and difference between male and female urethra. Here what you are seeing this is the sagittal view of male pelvis. Here you can see this is the anterior aspect, this is the anterior aspect, this is the posterior. You can see the pubic symphysis, this posteriorly sacrum with the cortex. See this is the urinary bladder, urinary bladder, this is the apex, this one is the superior surface, this part that is the base of the bladder. Then here you can see this is the prostate, here this is the urogenital diaphragm, this part this is the penis, here this is the bulb of the penis, this one is the body and this part is the glands. Here you can see this is the neck of the bladder, there will get here this is the internal urethral orifice. So urethra it is a muscular tube extends from this internal urethral orifice to the level of this external urethral orifice here, here for the exit of urine. Okay. So it travels this prostrate, okay, that part of the urethra is called the prostatic part of urethra. Then through this urogenital diaphragm, here this urogenital diaphragm, that part is the membranous part of urethra. Then through this penis, that is the spongy part or the penal part of urethra. Then here also we can see this the sagittal view of this bladder or the urethra. This is a bladder. Here this one is the prostate. Here you can see this the deep perineal pouch. Here, this is the penis, this is the bulb, this one is the body and this one is the glands. This, uh, this bulb forms the fixed part of the penis and this uh, body and glands forms the free part of the penis. Here you can see this is the blue color structure that is the urethra. Here this is the internal urethral orifice. Then here you can see this one is the external urethra orifice or meatus. Then it is the total length of urethra that is 18 to 20 centimeter in males and 3 to 4 centimeter only in females. Okay. Then coming to this course, course and parts, here begins from the neck of the bladder there here this is the neck of the bladder as here this is the internal urethral orifice then it runs forwards downwards through this prostatic part through the prostate okay as prostatic part of urethra then pierces the superior and inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm that inferior fascia that is called the perineal membrane okay pierces the sphincter urethra muscles then, then it reaches the bulb of penis, then travels through this body and glands, then it exit as external urethral orifice. Once it pierces the bulb, it runs forwards, it runs forwards and upwards. It is its course is here at forwards and upwards. Here you will get the pubic symphysis. At that, at that level it bends downwards and forwards through this body then through this glands then exit as the external urethral orifice. So in flaccid state the spongy part this one it appears as S-shaped S-shaped S -shaped. There you can see two curvatures, there is a proximal curvature here, this is the proximal curvature and there is a distal curvature. Okay. In erect state it is J shape, the spongy part, there is the obliteration of this uh, distal curvature, it is not there, only you can see there is the proximal curvature is there. So proximal curvature will be there, okay, it goes like this then there is the obliteration of the distal curvature. So it should be like this in the erect state. What you are seeing this one is in the flaccid state. Okay. So this is the proximal curvature, this one is the distal curvature. 
and also it shows two dilatations here in the spongy part here you can see at the level of the bulb this dilatation here this is the this part is the intrabulbar fossa here in the glands this dilatation here that is the navicular fossa okay then here it's also same the parts of the urethra here you can see this is the bladder bladder neck prostate this one is the fixed part and free part of the penis here this is the prostatic urethra here this area that is the membrane is urethra then here this is the penile urethra or the spongy urethra then here you can see the neck of the bladder this is the lateral view of the bladder with prostate see the apex superior surface and base of this uh, urinary bladder see this is the neck it relates to the prostate there so you can see the through the prostate there is the urethra then coming to the features of this prostatic part of the urethra here this is the frontal section what you're seeing the posterior wall of the urethra here this part is the prostatic part this is the internal urethral orifice you can see the prostate prostate gland then see the middle of the prost uh, prostatic part there is a mucosal elevation that is called the urethral crust this mucosal elevation that is the mu urethral crust over that mucosal elevation again there is uh, some uh, elevated area that is called the seminal colliculus that is the seminal colliculus on that you can see the opening of this prostatic utricle and also two in front that is the opening of this ejaculatory ducts this we have already explained this prostatic what is prostatic utricle and this one uh, the ejaculatory ducts okay then its sides of this uh, seminal colliculus you can see there is a space there that is called the here that is called the prostatic sinus here that space is called the prostatic sinus there you can see the openings of this prostate glands you can see the glands opens into that sinus okay. that's about the features of the prostatic part of the urethra then coming to this membranous part here this is the sagittal view here the anterior this is the posterior aspect so this is the prostatic part here you can see this is the urogenital diaphragm okay there is the this is the superior fascia here this is the inferior fascia that it forms the, that is the perineal membrane here i'll get two muscles deep transverse perineum and the sphincter urethrae okay now also in this deep perineal pouch there you can see one gland is there that is the bulbo urethral glands this is the bulbo urethral gland it opens see the duct is opens into this intrabulbar fossa of this uh, spongy part the duct opens into the intrabulbar fossa okay. so this part the small part this is the membranous part of this uh, urethra it's uh, only some 1.5 to 2 cm in length this prostatic part that is 3 cm in length and the spongy part or the penile part that is 15 cm in length so average length here the, the diameter of this um, spongy part that is 6 mm that's about the membranous part then coming to the spongy part here you are seeing this the frontal view okay of this uh, anterior half of the urethra this is the anterior half this one is the posterior wall of that urethra here this is the internal urethral orifice here we'll get the external urethral orifice so from here to here this is the urethra it travels the prostate prostatic urethra travels the urogenital diaphragm membranous urethra through the penis that is the spongy or the penile part see here 
here this part this is the intrabulbar fossa here this uh, dilated part here this dilated part here at this uh, free part okay the most di distal part that is the navicular fossa that is the navicular fossa then in the posterior wall there are numerous urethral glands opens okay the openings of urethral glands that collectively forms the lictus gland that collectively forms the lictus glands okay then additional to that there are some recesses also can see here in the wall that you can see here the recesses recesses cavities are there this recessor or cavity that are called the lacunae of moragni here you can see the lacunae of morgagni okay then one of that recess is large okay and he can see on this navicular fossa that is called the lacuna magna okay the small recess over that uh, spongy part that forms the lacunae of morgagni the one large recess that you can see in the navicular fossa just before this external urethral orifice that is the lacuna magna here we'll get the lacuna magna that's about the spongy part then here you can see the urethral sphincters here in relates to the neck of the bladder here you can see the neck of the bladder there is the longitudinal muscle a longitudinal layer of this uh, urinary bladder muscle detrusal muscles forms this internal urethral sphincter here there is the internal urethral sphincter it's under autonomic control so when this distrusal muscle contracts the internal urethral uh, this sphincter relax and the orifice opens okay there is the opening of that orifice then by means of that urine gets exit through this so uh, internal urethral orifice then to the urethra then here here we'll get this one is the here relates to this uh, prostate then at the level of this deep perineal pouch deep perineal pouch there is uh, two muscles are there deep transverse perine and sphincter urethrae the sphincter urethrae forms this external urethral sphincter external urethral sphincter okay that is from the ischiopubic ramus it uh, each sides of this ischiopubic ramus it uh, this muscles interdigitates with each other in the middle and forms this external urethral sphincter it's voluntary and it's the uh, nerve supply that is through the somatic nerves so it's the uh, it's voluntary so it can hold the urine the voluntary control over this urine okay so that's about this external urethral sphincter it's voluntary it's a uh, skeleton muscle here internal urethral sphincter that is the longitudinal the detrusal muscle okay it is involuntary that's about this urethral sphincters then here you can see this is the sagittal view of the female pelvis the anterior aspect see the posterior aspect here pubic symphysis sacrum with the coccyx see the urinary bladder urinary bladder this apex superior surface base you can see here base of the bladder then here you can see this the neck of the bladder here this area neck of the bladder it's the internal urethral orifice so it begins from the neck of the bladder through this uh, perineal membrane it travels the perineal membrane and the pelvic floor muscles your pelvic floor muscles and opens directly on to the perineum directly on to the perineum that's on the vestibule here this is the orifice external urethral orifice on the vestibule its length is 3 to 4 cm that's a female urethra here it's the difference between this uh, male and uh, female urethra it's uh, length 18 to 20 in males here it is uh, average it's 4 cm then here are the functions 
there is only urination here that is urination and ejaculation once there is ejaculation of semen there is the closure of the internal urethral orifice okay. then that is the main difference between male and the female urethra then blood supply of this urethra here male urethra that is through the mainly through this inferior vesicle branches and middle rectal branches from this middle rectal artery then dorsal and the bulb of the penis arteries of the dorsal artery the penis and the arteries of the bulb of the penis female through this internal pudendal artery and this vaginal artery these all are the branches of this internal iliac artery then now supply here can see the parasympathetic that is through this pelvic sphagnic nerves here this parasympathetic through this pelvic splanchnic nerves sympathetic preganglion fibers through this t2 t12 l1 l2 then somatic that is the external urethral sphincter gets a supply through this uh, pudendal now okay branch of the spinal branch of this uh, pudendal now then then lymphatic drainage this uh, posterior part of urethra okay posterior part of the urethra that is the prostatic part of urethra and this membranous part of the urethra forms the posterior part of urethra okay the spongy part the spongy part forms the anterior part of urethra spongy part forms the anterior part so this uh, posterior part of the urethra lymphatic drainage to this uh, internal iliac and this uh, external iliac lymph nodes the anterior part to the superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes okay that's all about the features of urethra then describe the male urethra under the following headings and it's the parts and features it's urethral sphincters about this internal and external urethral sphincters the parts which are the parts that is the prostatic part this membrane is part and the spongy part which are the features over those areas then blood supply of the urethra and its nerve supply thank you